Catastrophe, drama, intrigue. It looks like you guys were right. A funny thing happened when we started facing our fears. Our dreams came true. Now, we fly into the world's most dangerous storms as hurricane hunters. We own multiple businesses as entrepreneurs, and we have an abundance left over to share with others. We have just one lesson to share. Don't follow your passion. Follow your fears and conquer them with your passion. That's how you achieve big goals. So last week, we showed you the design for our new business's first kitchen table job. And we mentioned that the lumber was a little cracked and split. A lot of this lumber has cracks all through it. This whole piece of wood is punky. They've got cracks all through the entire bottom. So we just bought a little extra to account for that. But we didn't realize that it was quite this bad. Today we start milling the lumber for the big kitchen table. I have to get new carts because the ones I've been using have been too narrow and they've been like tipping over with large pieces of wood. So got bigger carts so they won't fall over when I'm passing material in and out of machines. Hi right, Jenny, what are we doing today? We are jointing all of the white oak for the table. And you're helping. Yes. Because it's heavy. I get to be in here today. That's exciting. It is exciting. So yeah, we'll fire up the joiner and we'll get going. Whew, man, it's not even hot and I'm already sweating. Um, I forgot my belt today too, so my pants are falling down. <laughs> you look like a like a kindergartner, like walking around pulling their pants up every five seconds or something. Anyway, got all this white oak milled up and um, man, it looks like you guys were right. Um, we thought when we saw the cracks and splits and stuff in the white oak that it was just rough wood and once we milled it down, it would start to look a lot better. And for the most part, about half about of it half did. Of it was decent. But the other half. Do not. Let me show you the other half. So first, these are red oak. These are not even white oak. The top two are red oak. So don't know how that happened. And now for the main event. Some of these boards have splits all the way through. These are on both sides. This is the underside of the board I just showed you. And it's the whole board. It's not just the end of the board. It's not just the edge of the board. It's the whole board all the way through. We find all these cracks. I mean, this lumber was bad. It was worse than what we originally thought. And there was going to be so much waste that we didn't even have enough lumber to build the entire kitchen table itself. If we did want to go ahead and use this lumber as is, we'd have to use like a half gallon of epoxy on everything, which would work, but it'd take forever. And then you'd see epoxy filled holes all over the table. And for $6,000, that's just not gonna fly. That's not what the customer is paying for. And we didn't wanna go back and buy even more lumber because the lumber we had just bought was complete trash. And you guys told us in the comments last week that we probably shouldn't have even accepted that lumber. But we honestly didn't think that it would be this bad. And call us stupid, but we didn't even know what grade of lumber we bought. I mean, we knew that there were grades of lumber, but all the lumber we've bought in the past has never had any problems like this. So we really didn't know what we were in for. So I thought, okay, well, obviously there's something missing here. There's there's something that we don't know about, right? Always blame yourself before you blame somebody else. That's so we just... thought to ourselves, we did not ask around to see if there was a higher grade of lumber we could have purchased. We've just been assuming that the, the level of lumber we've been buying is good enough 
And maybe there's one higher, but we've never really asked ourselves if there was. We called and the hardwood dealer said, no, everything we do is the highest grade. First and seconds is what it's called. And if you don't know, first and seconds, is the highest grade of lumber that exists. So I started doing a lot of research on different lumber grades, what it is, how they're defined, because clearly if we were gonna go ask for our money back, I needed to speak intelligently about what it was that was wrong with the wood. So we'll leave a link in the description right below the like button for this handy dandy little illustrated guide of lumber grades if you wanna check it out yourself. So after doing a bunch of research on grades of lumber, we realized that what we had received definitely was not first in seconds. And especially with the price of lumber right now, specifically white oak, it definitely was not up to standards. So we called the lumber dealer and explained what happened over the phone. We explained how usually we get very high quality lumber from them and we really love it, but this time it was just uncharacteristically bad and we ourselves were a little confused. And they were shocked and confused also. They had just gotten in a huge shipment of this lumber from their supplier and they were kind of worried that the rest of the lumber in their pile was going to be that way also. So they wanted us to load it back up into the truck, drive it over so that they could see exactly what we were talking about. We need to get what we've paid for. Well, I don't even have enough to make just the tabletop, much less the table base. And I bought an additional 30% over what I thought I would need. Well, we're gonna go over there, get the wood and then come back and then remill all that up to match this. Great. So we're gonna be about a day behind. We've been getting a ton of questions about what exactly is in our brand new program we just released, My Basement Business. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna be able to accomplish and what you're gonna get after going through the My Basement Business program. Bottom line, you are gonna be transformed into a business owner. This program is as close as we can get to flying out to your house and helping you start your business out of your basement step by step. So here's what you're gonna do in the program. You're gonna set a goal for your business so that you know where you're going. We're gonna help you pick a product to sell. And then after that, you're gonna pick a name for your business. Once you've done that, we're gonna teach you how to price your work profitably. And from there, you're gonna go on to make your first three sales. We're gonna tell you exactly what to say and who to say it to. And then we're gonna teach you how to grow your business based on the success of your past three sales. And after going through all of that, you're gonna get our three bonuses, which are advanced techniques and tips, which covers things that you need to know after you've made your first three sales. We also talk about some traps to avoid. And lastly, we do a 60 minute in-depth story about how we started both of our businesses because sometimes it's easier to learn from the stories of other people. And we've even got an awesome workbook that's gonna walk you through all of it. Anyway, if you've been thinking about getting it, get it now because it's still on sale. Use the discount code LOYALTY to get 25% off the price of the course because we wanna make sure that for the first few days we're launching the program that you guys are loyal subscribers get it cheaper first much better when we got there, they took one look at what was in my truck bed and immediately started pulling it out. They had already set aside a batch of lumber that was perfect, defect free, and loaded it into the truck for us. They even gave us a little extra for our troubles of having to drive back. So they were also really confused and shocked that they had received lumber of such low quality and they wanted to make sure that they let their supplier know that. So they took lots of pictures of the wood so that they could send it back and hopefully keep this whole fiasco from ever happening again to us and to the rest of their customers. So there are a couple of lessons we learned from this whole ordeal. The first of which is, we need to do a better job inspecting and looking at the lumber before we drive away from the hardwood dealer. Now that we're read up, we've done our research, we know exactly what grades look like, we need to be able to look at it a little closer. Even though it's rough cut, we probably could have seen some of the cracks and checks in this last batch. We just thought once we started milling it, it would clean up and start to look a lot better. It didn't. <laughs> All right, another day, another shirt. We are, no, no, it's not a Bucky shirt. It's a Hurricane Hunter shirt. I thought it was a Bucky shirt. Today, we're gonna mill up the rest of the white oak so that we can get the tabletop hopefully glued up by the end of the day. That's the goal for today. I don't know which pieces we're still gonna use for the tabletop of the old batch of lumber because this new lumber looks so much better. Um, we'll just have to mill it and see, but um, some of this might end up being turned into the leg stock. So we'll just mill everything get it all down to the same size, and then figure out what parts we want to use for the top. More milling! Yay! You're not happy about this, are you? It's just a little cold outside. 
Catastrophe, drama, intrigue. Dust collector bag broke. Giant hole right there. Off to a great start. Look at this guy. This is the biggest piece. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's 12, over 12 inches wide. Wide yes. oak, just went straight through the planer, barely even bogged down. That's what I like to see. That right there is worth three boards of whatever we returned. Oh my gosh, yes. So, man, that looks nice. All right, change of plans. So uh, we started wrestling with these pieces. Like you can see this one right here is bananaed pretty bad. Um, I can use this particular piece for leg stock, but these other ones, they've got quite a bit of, I don't know, bananaing bowing. They're, they're 10 foot long and I got a joint one edge. So I, I'm really wrestling with this joiner and I think that I'm doing a lot of unnecessary work. A few months ago, we bought a 10 foot long mm. track saw track. Yeah. And my idea was that before we ever screwed around with the joiner, we could just zip one edge with the track saw, get it close to straight, and then clean it, and up, then on the it up on the joiner. finish it up on the joiner. But that track saw track is still at home on top of the home lumber rack. We're gonna go home and come back. Two hours later. All right, we finally got all the lumber milled to the same thickness. So we'll lay it out, see what we can use for the tabletop. Well, first we gotta cut it to full width on the table saw to get rid of this last nasty edge. And then we can lay it out, figure out the tabletop, and then the rest will just be leg stock. Um, it's coming together, I'm really excited. It's, this is some gorgeous white oak. This is gonna be a big table. Well, good news is after milling and everything, we've got about six foot wide worth of material to work with. I think the table only needs to be four feet wide. So we've got more than enough stock to deal with. We got plenty for a That's table. That's good. Yeah, I guess we'll sort through, pick out the best sides and then see which ones we want to keep, which ones we want to toss. Which ones will make the cut. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> I'm cut off. So we learned a lot about lumber grades and we also taught the hardwood dealer that we expect true firsts and seconds when we place an order. We also created an opportunity for them to go talk to and chew out their supplier so that they don't receive any bad lumber like that ever again. It was really a win-win situation for everybody. And this is all thanks to the wonderful, helpful people in the comments who are following along on our journey and want to help us grow. So thank you. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan.